Niger, officially known as the Republic of Niger, is a landlocked country in West Africa. It is bordered by Algeria to the north, Libya to the northeast, Chad to the east, Nigeria to the south, Benin to the southwest, and Burkina Faso and Mali to the west. The earliest known inhabitants of Niger were the Berbers, who arrived in the region in the second millennium BC. In the 11th century, the pre-colonial era of Niger was a time of great change and development. The inhabitants of the region were hunter-gatherers, but they were eventually replaced by agricultural societies. The pre-colonial era of Niger is marked by the rise and fall of powerful empires, vibrant trade routes, and rich cultural tradition, situated as a crossroads between North and Sub-Saharan Africa. Diverse settlements and interactions were possible due to Niger's geographical location. Notable empires like Songhai and Kanem-Bornu thrived, controlling trade and showcasing administrative prowess. Zarma kingdoms and Tuareg confederations added to the cultural diversity. The Kanem Empire was founded in the 8th century and lasted for over 1,000 years. It was a powerful military force and controlled a large territory in the Sahara Desert. The Songhai Empire was founded in the 13th century and reached its peak in the 15th century. The Songhai Empire was a powerful trading empire that controlled much of West Africa. It was eventually conquered by the Moroccans in the 16th century, and its capital, Gao, was one of the most important cities in West Africa. Trade flourished, with Saharan routes linking regions and facilitating the exchange of commodities like gold, salt, and textiles. Islam spread through trade, while traditional beliefs persisted, contributing to Niger's cultural mosaic. Notable cities like Jena Geno exhibited unique architecture, and terracotta sculptures reflected artistic achievements. The pre-colonial era of Niger was also a time of great cultural diversity. The different peoples of Niger spoke different languages, practiced different religions, and had different customs and traditions. However, they were all united by their common heritage and their shared experience of living in a harsh and unforgiving environment. The pre-colonial era of Niger came to an end in the 19th century, when the region was colonized by France. The legacy of the pre-colonial era continues to shape Niger today. The country's diverse cultures, languages, and religions are all rooted in the pre-colonial era, and they continue to play an important role in the lives of Nigerians. The colonization of Niger by France was part of the broader European scramble for Africa. The Berlin Conference of 1884 to 1885 formalized the process of carving up Africa among European powers, establishing the rules for claiming and occupying territories during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. France sought to expand its influence and control over various African territories, including Niger, for economic, political, and strategic reasons. The process of French colonization began with exploratory missions and interactions with local communities. Explorers like René Kaili and Heinrich Barth ventured into the Sahel region, including present-day Niger, during the early to mid-19th century. These explorers provided valuable information about the geography, resources, and cultures of the region. France aimed to establish formal control over the territory through treaties and agreements with local leaders. These agreements often involved recognizing the sovereignty of the local rulers while establishing French protection and influence. These treaties were often negotiated with local chiefs or leaders, sometimes under unequal terms due to the power dynamics. As European powers increased their presence in Africa, conflicts arose between colonial powers and local resistance. France utilized military force to establish and consolidate its control over Niger. The Tuareg resistance, for example, posed a challenge to French expansion in the Saharan regions of Niger. France conducted military campaigns to suppress resistance and establish its authority. Niger became part of the larger French colonial administrative structure known as French West, Africa Afrique Occidentale Française, AOF. This administrative entity encompassed several West African territories, including Senegal, Mali, Burkina Faso, Côte d'Ivoire, and Niger. AOF allowed France to consolidate its control over a vast region and exploit its resources. 
France aimed to exploit Niger's resources for its economic benefit. The colony was known for producing valuable commodities such as peanuts, cotton, and uranium. These resources were exported to France and other minerals, agricultural products, and labor, contributing to the colonial power's economic growth. This often led to exploitative practices and economic inequalities. France established colonial infrastructure in Niger, including roads, railways, and administrative buildings. These developments were aimed at facilitating the movement of resources and enhancing administrative control. French colonization had a profound impact on Niger's society and culture. The imposition of colonial rule disrupted traditional social structures and often led to forced labor, taxation, and changes in land ownership. French influence also introduced Western education, religion, and cultural practices. Over time, anti-colonial sentiments began to emerge in Niger and other African colonies. These sentiments were fueled by the exploitation and oppressive practices of colonial rule. Protests, uprisings, and political movements advocating for independence gained momentum in the mid-20th century. Niger remained a French colony until it gained its independence on August 3, 1960. The process of colonization had lasting effects on the country's socio-political landscape, contributing to the challenges and opportunities that shaped its post-independence development to date. The struggle for independence in Niger was a significant chapter in the country's history, marked by the efforts of its people to break free from French colonial rule and establish their sovereign nation. In the late 1940s and early 1950s, political organizations like the Niger Progressive Party, PPN, and the Sawaba Party were established. These parties aimed to address colonial grievances, demand political representation, and work towards greater autonomy. As nationalist sentiments grew, there were instances of protests and resistance against colonial authorities. The Sawaba Party, led by Jibo Bakari Gwindo, was particularly active in advocating for full independence and equal rights. The pressure from the growing nationalist movement led to negotiations between the French government and Nigerian leaders. These negotiations resulted in the establishment of internal self-government for Niger within the French community, granting the colony a certain degree of autonomy. On August 3, 1960, a referendum was held in Niger to determine the country's future status. An overwhelming majority of the population voted in favor of independence. Consequently, Niger became an autonomous and sovereign nation on the same day. Let us look into some of the key factors that influenced the Nigerians in the struggle for independence. The desire for democracy, human rights, and self-governance. The Pan-African movement, which advocated for unity, solidarity, and liberation of African nations from colonialism, played a crucial role in inspiring independence movements across the continent. The disruptions caused by World War II weakened colonial powers, and the war itself exposed the contradictions of colonialism. The contributions of African soldiers during the war raised questions about the fairness of colonial rule. After Niger gained independence from France on August 3, 1960, Hamani Diori became the country's first president. The initial years of independence were characterized by optimism and hope for the future. However, the young nation faced significant challenges, including economic difficulties, political instability, and regional tensions. Niger's economy heavily relied on uranium and agriculture, particularly subsistence farming and mining. The country faced economic challenges due to fluctuations in global commodity prices, including a decline in uranium prices, droughts that affected agricultural productivity, and limited infrastructure development. The reliance on uranium exports left Niger vulnerable to economic shocks. The lack of diversified industries and a strong agricultural base contributed to an economic imbalance and limited opportunities for economic growth. Niger faced challenges related to underdevelopment, including poor infrastructure, inadequate health care, low levels of education, and widespread poverty. These factors hindered the country's progress and contributed to social discontent. While these are some of the challenges that plunged Niger's economic development, some educated Nigerian are accusing France of stealing their uranium and other minerals. 
They also claim that France and the West are involved in Niger's impoverished internal conflicts and series of crises. President Diori's administration faced allegations of corruption, mismanagement, and authoritarian tendencies. Over time, Diori centralized power and suppressed political opposition. His government was criticized for favoritism, limited political freedoms, and a lack of transparency in governance. Niger is ethnically and culturally diverse, with various ethnic groups and regional identities. Tensions emerged among different ethnic and regional groups, complicating the nation-building process. The government's handling of these tensions often led to discontent and further polarization. The military in Niger became increasingly dissatisfied with President Diori's government. Military officers felt marginalized in political decision-making and governance. As grievances accumulated, some military personnel began to consider the possibility of a coup as a means to address their concerns and effect change. The economic disparities and social inequities prevalent in Niger contributed to growing frustration among the population. The elite were seen as benefiting from the country's resources, while many citizens struggled with poverty and lack of basic services. This disparity fueled resentment and discontent. On April 15, 1974, a group of military officers led by Lieutenant Colonel Saini Kaucha staged a coup against President Diori's government. The coup was relatively bloodless, and Diori was subsequently arrested. The coup marked the end of Niger's First Republic and the beginning of military rule under the Supreme Military Council, led by Kaucha. Some civilian leaders, including the National Assembly President Jibo Bakari, supported the coup. They believed that it was necessary to overthrow Diori and bring about political change. There have been several coups in Niger, which have resulted in the following numbers. 1974, coup led by Colonel Saini Kuncha. In 1974, a group of military officers led by Colonel Saini Kuncha carried out a coup that toppled the government of President Hamani Diori. The coup was driven by dissatisfaction with Diori's leadership, perceived corruption, economic challenges, and political repression. Kaunche's junta ruled Niger as a military dictatorship until his death in 1987. His regime aimed to address corruption, improve governance, and stabilize the economy. Kaunche pursued a policy of nationalization and economic reform while maintaining tight control over the political landscape. His rule marked a period of authoritarianism mixed with efforts to address some of the nation's pressing issues. I would like to share my thoughts on this topic and the various issues related to it. I think it is time for Africans to be free totally from colonial and imperialist influence in the African states. The rise of coup d'etat in Africa, especially in the Western region, has raised concern towards the call for equitable justice for Africa. The new movement of conscious African leaders is sending a message to their colonial masters that they want to take total control of their country and resources. Some African activists and Pan-Africanists believe that their colonial military base in the African region does not solve any internal political crisis in the African states. There are wide claims that a lot of the internal conflict in African countries like Niger is orchestrated by their colonial masters. These colonial masters still have their hold on the nation's political structures. And they also sponsored opposition and terrorism to create chaos, political instability, and declined economic development. While they may appear as peacekeepers and aid providers, they often exploit resources such as uranium and gold. If you find this video inspiring and helpful, kindly hit the like button and subscribe to this channel.